Congress returns from a two-week recess on Tuesday to a fresh round of chaos. House Speaker Mike Johnson is looking to pass an aid package for Ukraine while avoiding Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene's attempts to strip him of the gavel. Congressman Dan Kildee is back with us. You almost would feel bad for him, Congressman, if he had not brought this upon himself. Yeah, it's hard to feel bad for him when he really fails to do the job of the Speaker. He's the Speaker of the whole House. He ought to measure the sentiments of the whole House and then bring policies forward that the whole House can support. Because he's pandering to the most extreme members of the Congress, just like Kevin McCarthy did, he's placed himself in this position. If he wants to avoid Marjorie Taylor Greene's antics, he can make a phone call. The easiest person in Congress to talk to is Hakeem Jeffries. And if they had a conversation, there may be a way for us to find a path forward. I know they talk, but if they had a if, if Mike Johnson was interested in having a substantive conversation, Kim is one of my closest friends. I know, just based on how well I know him, he'd be open to that. So uh, this is an important point, then. So you're saying that, um, just to put a finer point on it, the, to your knowledge, Speaker Johnson has not reached out to the Democratic leader, Hakeem Jeffries. So all of this conversation about, will Democrats save Johnson? What will they do if, if a motion to vacate moves? He... Speaker Johnson's not currently trying to negotiate with the Democrats. Well, I don't know that they've had a specific conversation mm -hmm. on that point. I know they talk policy mm -hmm. all the time. But we, you know, we made it clear when Kevin McCarthy was facing this question that if he wants to have a conversation about a path forward that would include Democrats, we're open to that discussion. Kevin McCarthy said, go jump in the lake. Now, I don't know what Mike Johnson's position is, but I know he's getting awfully close to the edge of that lake right now. And if he wants to continue to be speaker, and he knows and realizes that the functional majority of the House of Representatives is comprised of Democrats and Republicans, then he can have that conversation with Hakeem Jeffries. We can find a path forward. We can do the work of the American people. And then we'll litigate who's going to lead the Congress in the next session at the November ballot box. Well, that, that's the, the rub. Um, because if I'm, I'm Speaker Mike Johnson, at a certain point, I have to do math. I just have to do math. And the math tells me I'm not in this job come next January. Yeah. That's what the math and the Senate's a different conversation. But the House, the math is saying I'm not in this job. So then it becomes a question of do I play to the math or do I play to Marjorie Taylor Greene? Because either way, what's at stake is my legacy in the job. Yeah. And so if, if he wants to burnish a legacy other than he was Marjorie Taylor Greene's pet, and, and he was bullied into taking uh, basically illiberal behavior and, and positions on policy, like, I don't know, the border. You also now have the question of Ukraine. And I think this is the particular point I'd love to get your view on, how that is sort of shaping his approach to that lake that you, re that you referenced and whether or not he's just going to do like McCarthy and jump in it and swim on out you know, to some place, the past, swim out to the pasture, right. uh, or is he going to try to stay on shore and and actually serve out this his speakership, knowing that the, I'm in the job because I got Democrats who are going to hold me here at least till January. I think the thing he faces is what every speaker faces. There are consequences to that calculation that he's trying to make. If he thinks he wants to make it to the end of the year, maybe try to hold the house. He has to you know, figure into that calculation the fact that if we don't act on Ukraine, for example, mm -hmm. there's a consequence for the, for the entire world. Uh, the Ukrainian people are just hanging right. on. They don't have the material they need in order to defend against Putin. And there, we don't have a lot of time for him to sort of sit and ruminate. He can't sort of run the clock out right. until yeah. November. Right. There's a lot that's going to happen between now and then. A lot of people compare... Congress to high school, they don't believe in science, you know, they failed civics, but <laughs> and now they're sure not going to math class. Now they're failing math. Now they're failing math. They skip at school. You know. They skip at school. They, I guess they do well at lunch, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Alicia, it's like high school. Yes. Congress is like high school. It's like high school, except, as we can all appreciate, the stakes are extraordinarily high. Very high. This, the, this, Very this, high. Which, you know, I, t with respect to all my high schoolers out there, because I do understand that the stakes are high when you were in high school, but, you know, we're talking about matters of national security. 
we're talking mm -hmm. about matters of domestic productivity. And instead of focusing congressmen on those core issues, they are instead in la la land. And it's it's one thing to say, you know, he doesn't have control over his caucus. That would be fine if it had no real consequences for the American people. It has consequences for America no as question. a superpower. It has consequences for human life right now. There are people who will die because the speaker is unwilling to just walk across the aisle and say, let's take the will of the 300 plus members of the House and 70 members of the Senate and the pen of the president to support the Ukrainian people in their struggle against Putin's you know, unprecedented uh, invasion. There's a human consequence to this in the short term. In the long term, there's a geopolitical consequence that could be felt for generations. And we all run for these jobs because we want to do big things. They seem to be so focused on their own internal political theater that they've forgotten the reason that they came to this place in the, in the first place. Congressman Dan Kildee of Michigan. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.